you're watching just the news i'm amrita balachandra it's day 14 of russia ukraine crisis we focus on that and the fact that us has now ban- announced a ban on imports of russian oil we talk about what the impact of that will be we also focus on the explosion that's taken t- place in jammu and kashmir which has killed one and injured 14 others there's also a fair bit of time spent on politics because com- tomorrow is counting day for five states and an interesting study on amazon rainforest reaching the tipping point and why it is going to uh, happen uh, among other stories so uh, stay tuned for the entire bulletin we start off with russia's invasion of ukraine it's day 14 the president of the united states has announced a ban on imports of russian oil gas and energy uh, afp has quoted him as saying and i quote The ban on Russian oil imports has been decided in close consultation with allies. The president also warned that the move would probably increase gas prices in the US, but that it was necessary to ramp up sanctions, uh pressure on Russia's economy for its war on Ukraine. Now in 2021, uh Russian crude oil accounted for about 10% of US oil imports, but about 30% uh of the oil imports of Europe now the US remains uh, and this is the impact really the U- US remains the world's largest producer and a net exporter of crude oil meanwhile britain has said that it would phase uh, them out by the end of 2022 and consider banning its natural gas now earlier energy giant shell had said that it would stop buying russian crude jp morgan estimated about uh, that around 70% of russian seaborne uh, oil was struggling to find buyers meanwhile we must talk about brent crude oil prices which is skyrocketed at this point in time it crossed 130 dollar per barrel uh, mark on monday and has been increasing since the russia ukraine crisis has intensified now it's now surpassed the 2012 mark of over 128 dollar per barrel Now this is the situation on ground really yesterday we told you that indian students were successfully evacuated from sumi uh, but several other cities and several other civilians in those cities still continue to be stranded ukraine is trying to uh, evacuate uh, civilians through six humanitarian corridors and this was a new ceasefire that was announced today ukraine's deputy prime minister said that russia has agreed to a new 12 hour ceasefire to allow civilians to flee six of the worst affected areas in Ukraine now russian armed forces have agreed to hold fire along uh, cease fire along humanitarian corridors from 9 am to 9 pm local time which is 7 am to 7 pm gmt now russian foreign ministry spokesperson has said that russia will achieve its goal of ensuring ukraine's neutral status and would prefer to do that through talks She went on to say that Moscow's aims do not include overthrowing uh, the Kyiv government and it hopes to achieve more significant progress in the next round of talks with Ukraine. Uh, Russia's military operation was going strictly in line with its plan is what the report said and this is a report according to Reuters. Now Ukraine president has in the meantime said that a no fly zone is needed over Ukraine to prevent a human- humanitarian catastrophe. Uh he said this is an appeal to foreign leaders. He said the international community would be responsible for what followed if it did not implement the measure. A convoy in the meantime of evacuees have left the Ukrainian city of Veranhodor uh, through a human- humanitarian corridor today after a temporary ceasefire was agreed with the Russian forces according to the city's mayor now this is the site of one of the, one of Europe's largest nuclear power station which is now under Russia's Russia's control according to reports uh, the mayor said that mostly women and children the elderly have left the city Ukraine has also said that the former nuclear plant at Chernobyl has lost its power supply following the site seizure by Russian troops. However, IAEA has uh, said no critical impact on safety after power losses at Chernobyl. Now, in the meantime, Ukraine's energy minister has said that the Ukrainian authorities do not know what the radiation levels are at this nuclear power plant. 
as they have not heard about what is happening there since it was seized by Russian troops. The world in the meantime is trying to impose more sanctions. We start off with the European Union. France has announced that the European Union has agreed to a new round of sanctions targeting senior Russian officials. Uh, the new sanctions would also include restrictions on the maritime sector and include exclude I beg your pardon, three Belarusian banks from the SWIFT banking system. Also in the news, the International Monetary Fund has approved $1.4 billion in emergency support for Ukraine to finance expenditures and shore up the balance of payments. Ukraine had turned to financing uh, from uh, allies and international institutions to support its economy after the Russian invasion began on the 24th of February. Now, there's an interesting comment that's come in from Union Minister Piyush Goel, who today said that the students in Ukraine did not take the advisory seriously. Now, India has said that all students who were stuck in Sumi have been evacuated. So evacuation uh, and what it called Operation Ganga is complete, is what the Indian government has said. Mr. Goel, according to ANI, has said, and I quote, the government of India issued advisory on 15th February. Thereafter, we issued two more advisories. 4,000 people came before the war broke out. More could have come. Neither students took advisory seriously, nor their universities permitted them to leave Ukraine. End quote. Now, there are enough reports talking about how these advisories, especially the ones initially, were not worded right. Now, an old news report has pointed out that the Indian Embassy in Ukraine had also asked the students to not panic and maintain the stance till the 20th of February. When the advisory's wordings changed from don't panic to leave and not just leave temporarily but leave immediately, reports said that students were complaining of flight tickets being sold out very quickly because initially there were only a few flights. That number increased much later when uh, Russia's invasion on Ukraine sort of intensified and the students were also complaining of high fares. In other news now, the story coming in from Jammu, Jammu and Kashmir where Indian Express has quoted sources uh, and said that at least one person was killed and 14 others were injured in a powerful explosion in Jammu and Kashmir's Udhampur town today afternoon. The victims appear to be vendors, uh, the report said, and passers-by. The injured were rushed to the district hospital at Udhampur, where one of them succumbed to his injuries. Also, PTI has reported quoting sources saying that Serum Institute of India's Covovax has been granted emergency use authorization by Drugs Controller General of India uh, for children from age groups of 12 to 17. Uh, it is the fourth vaccine to receive the regulators not for use among those below 18 years of age. On to politics right now, there's a fair bit of media coverage on EVM complaints. Uh, we start off with that. Three officials have been removed from election duty in Uttar Pradesh on Wednesday, a day after the Samajwadi party alleged that electronic voting machines were being shifted allegedly in an unauthorized manner. Now, the nodal officer for EVMs in Varanasi, a returning officer uh, in Sonbhadra district and an additional election officer in Bareilly district have been pulled out from election duties. Samajwadi party chief Akhilesh Yadav had accused the government of stealing the election yesterday after a truck carrying voting machines was intercepted by party workers in Varanasi. The action by the election commission comes a day before the counting of votes begins in five states, including Uttar Pradesh. Also in the news, according to a report by the Indian Express, the Supreme Court yesterday refused to hear a plea seeking directions to the Election Commission to verify the voter verified paper audit trail or VVPAT slips of electronic voting machine before the votes are counted. Now, VVPAT is a machine that prints a paper slip of the candidate's name, serial number and the party symbol after a voter has cast his or her vote. Also in the news, the Supreme Court today has granted bail to one of the convicts of former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi's assassination, A.G. Perarivalan, who sent, was sentenced to life imprisonment, has spent 32 years in jail. Now, the court order said, and I quote, There is no dispute regarding the fact that Perarivalan has 
uh, undergone 32 years of sentence. Applicant was released on parole thrice earlier and there was no complaint about his conduct during the release. Uh, taking note of the fact that he has spent more than 30 years in jail, we are of the view that he is entitled to be released on bail, end quote. Moving on to environment news right now, there's an important study that's come in which says, and this is a study by the University of Exeter, the Amazon rainforest is moving towards, this is what the study says, towards a tipping point where trees may die off together. Now, a study suggests the world's uh, largest air rainforest is losing its ability to bounce back from damage caused by droughts, fires and deforestation. Now, the findings based on three decades of satellite data show alarming trends in the health of the Amazon rainforest. And one piece of good news before we wrap up things here on this bulletin, Team India all-rounder Ravindu Jareja has become the world number one all-rounder in test cricket after jumping two spots in the latest ICC rankings. Now, Jareja was named player of the match for his show against Sri Lanka uh, in Mohali, where India won under three days by an innings and 222 runs. That brings us to the end of this bulletin. Thank you so much for watching. Good night. Thank you.